Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Yesterday I said today was going to be blue day in rainbow fortnight slash week, but actually it's going to be bluey green or greeny blue day, turquoise day, somewhere in between green and blue. And I'm going to create this card for you using these feather dies and these leaf dies. They are masquerading as feathers. Right, let's get on with it. Today I'm going to start by creating an aperture in the front panel of my card. So I've got a square card blank here. It's five and three quarter by five and three quarter smooth white cardstock. And I've used another one to create a square panel that's going to sit on top like that. So we're going to put an aperture in this today. And to help with that, I've got a circle die. This is the largest one in the set. And I'm going to position it roughly in the middle of my card. I'm just going to eyeball it because that's good enough. And I'm going to very lightly draw a circle in pencil around the outside. And that's going to give me a guideline for my next step which is to arrange these feather dies around the circle. And now I have no idea what brand these are. This one came from the charity shop. And these two, I have a feeling they're actually meant to be leaves. And I think I got them off the front of a, a, a craft magazine several years ago. So I'm arranging these. I'm going to try and spread them out a little bit to curve in the same curve as the circle and then I'm going to hold them in place with a bit of sticky note and run that through my cuttle bug and now we can pop those out we should have three apertures and I'm going to do that again to cut some more once I get these feathers out, I'm going to keep these. I might use these later, not 100% sure. And again, line that up with the edge of the circle, leaving a bit of a gap. And hopefully that one will fit in there for a final run through the die cutting machine. And there we go, we've got a circle of feathers. Now I'm going to keep my dies on this sticky note so they don't go wandering off. And I'm going to pop them in this little tub here along with the little white feathers that I've cut out. Whenever I'm working on a project, I always have a tub next to me that I can just throw dies in, die cuts in, stamps in and then put everything away at the end of the project. That way things don't tend to get lost. That's the theory anyway, sometimes things do wander off. So I'm gonna take an eraser and erase that pencil mark. Because I did it lightly, it won't mark the paper at all. And you'd never know it was there by the time I've gone all the way around. When I ran this through the die cutting machine, I did pop another bit of card over the front to protect this panel from any scratches that are in my uh, cutting plates. So step two is to create a bit of mixed media. And that's gonna go behind this panel. So I've got some mixed media paper here. This is the bit I'm going to put my aperture mixed media on but I am going to create a larger piece because I might want to die cut some things out of it later and I'd like it all to coordinate so I'm going to smush and I've got my bluey greens here or my greeny blues one or the other so I've got speckled egg which is maybe not quite 
in that colour family but it's uh, it's a nice light colour and works well with these and this is salvage patina and I've got peacock feathers and it's the peacock feathers that gave me the idea for this card because obviously feathers and we're going to start with the lightest colour see it does look kind of greeny blue when you get it on the mat and I'm going to smush all over making sure to get a good smushing especially here which is where my aperture is going to come from but also here if you want to know how to make and use a smusher check out the video that's linked above and in the de video description I always go to say in the description box below but depending on where you're watching this whether it's desktop or app or whatever the description might be to the side so look for the description click the more button and then that should reveal all the information so I think I shall dry that with my hairdryer right that's dry enough now for some salvaged patina I think this might be my favourite Distress Oxide. I just love this colour. There we go. Smush some more on. Get it everywhere. And dry that with my hairdryer. And finally, some peacock feathers. This is lovely and dark. So I don't want quite as much of this, I don't think. We'll see what it looks like when I've finished. Okay, that's that done. I've got clean fingers so I can get my aperture. So that is going to sit over there like that and I like that. I think that looks good. It's about the right amount of, of smushing. I'm just going to pop some pencil marks because I'm going to do some stamping next. Let's line that up there. Just draw around, roughly around there like that. Just so I've got an idea where my stamping's going to go. And I'm gonna stamp with this text stamp. It's unreadable, it's just for texture rather than the, the text as it were. And it's unmounted, so I'm gonna pop a bit of stick glue on this acrylic block and then stick that on there like that and I use stick glue for this because I can just put this in some warm water and it will clean up both the stamp and the uh, acrylic block just fine so that's secure enough for now and I'm going to use my stamp positioner but only because it's got a nice firm foam pad in there which just gives a little bit of give when I'm stamping and helps me get a good impression and I'm going to do some foiling. So I've got a sheet of sticky transfer foil. It's not sticky, it transfers two sticky things. So I've got that, put that to the side. I've got a dedicated gluey dauber here and some liquid glue. This is Spectrum Noir Versatile Adhesive. You can use Zig two-way glue for this. Just wait till it's gone clear. But I've got this, so I'm going to going to use it today, put some on my mat, pick it up with my dauber and apply it to my stamp. The good thing about this glue is it's got a kind of pearlescentness to it which means I can see when I've inked everything. Now I'm not necessarily after a perfect impression I just want an impression as I say this is um, not meant to be readable it's just giving some texture so pop that on there and then pop my gold foil shiny side up and I'll get my um, air hockey thing or whatever it's called I don't know what this is called I use it for pressing things down and just smooth that over pick up the foil when I can get it and there you can see 
some lovely text but it's unreadable it's not perfect but that's absolutely fine that's that's what i want really now i'm just going to mask off over here because i don't want um to stamp it on this bit I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with my feathers yet. And what I do with this is, because I haven't got a chance to go and wash it right now, I'm going to wrap it in a damp baby wipe so it doesn't dry out. You could just plop it in a glass of water. Sometimes I do that if I've got one on my desk from watercoloring. I'm going to go over this with uh, baby wipe to get the worst of the glue off and again I'll just put that to one side and then I'll go and give it a wash and get all that glue off the stamp and the acrylic block later. And that should be fine now. So where's my aperture? There it is. So I'll pop that on top and I think that looks about right. Now I'm going to cut this out I'm going to leave a bit of a gap because I want to be able to adhere it to the back of my panel. But not too big. I want it to be smaller than the front panel. And now I'm going to run this through this feathery embossing folder just to give it a little bit of texture. So that way up, I want to get the, the circle... in the middle and I'll be back in a tip. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera but there is some feather embossing in the background. So the next thing I'm going to do is pop some craft foam behind this panel. So I've added lots of foam around the feathers to keep them stable, keep them popped up. I'll just take off this inner foam. that'll do. I'm just going to trim that down a bit because it's not quite square on the back but that's okay. So I've got my scoreboard here. I'm going to pop my, I think this is 3 sixteenths corner positioner in there and I'm going to pop that right in there, get that jammed into the corner so it's stuck down and then pull these little bits out and there we have the front of the card now for some decoration I've got my extra bit of mixed media here and a selection of feather dies again these are random from various sources and I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine so now I've got some feathers that are similar to the background I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use I think I definitely want to use this one here because it's so pretty This large one I think is too large and flat. I might cut this from vellum. We've got some leftover white ones from earlier. I think the little ones look a bit too much like leaves. But these look definitely featherish. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut each of these from white, each of these from vellum, and then look at layering them up. So there we go, I've got four piles of feathers. I've got my mixed media one, white one, vellum, and I also cut some out of gold cardstock because I thought I might put a gold feather in there. Before I do any arranging, I do want to give these a bit more definition. At the moment, they feel quite flat. But if I take a small detail brush, 
blending brush and go around the outside with some peacock feathers. I think that will give them a bit of dimension. <laughs> And when I'm at it, I'm going to gilt, gild, gilt the edges, put gilt on the edges, I don't know. Put some of this wax gold on the edges. Again, on this one, I might add a bit down the main feathery bit. This just highlights, shimmers, and makes them look a little bit extra special. The other thing I can do to give them a bit more dimension is to actually give them a bit more dimension. I could do this from the front or from behind, but I can use an embossing tool to emboss some feather texture on, like that. So I don't know if you can see that from behind. Just pressing down to make them curl a little bit, if nothing else, to give it a bit of texture. I'm doing it on craft foam so that I've got something to press into. That one I'm going to leave as is because it's too delicate. So I want to make sure my fingers are clean. So I'm wondering maybe a couple of vellum feathers in the background to add that delicate touch um, and some white ones to add a bit of dimension and then I've got a gold one not sure which one I want. I want them the same. Let's take that one off for a minute. Maybe could put that one behind it. I'm wondering about backing that one with gold card. I think that'll just give it a little bit of something. I'm gonna have a go. Yes, I think. Something like that. Where's the super tall one? I've got that tall vellum one. I might just try and give it a bit of a curl without creasing the gold too much. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start sticking things down and building and thinking as I go. So, because the glue will be hidden, or this vellum feather will be hidden behind uh, pretty much everything. I'm not worrying too much about glue showing through. Um, same with this one. Just putting a little dob on and that can peek out over there. And I think we'll have this large white feather. So I'm going to put the largish things in the background so that they peek out. I've given that a bit of a curl just by folding it in, but I don't want it too dimensional. I don't want it too T double O, not T W O, <laughs> two dimensional because uh, I'm putting things on top of it. I might put those two together. I think we'll add this one next. I'm just putting glue along the veiny part of the leaf. No, feather. 
I'm not sure what that bit of a feather is called. The bit that goes up the middle. And then we've got this one. Can come out to the side and add a bit of texture. Let's have this little vellum one sticking out the side. Like that maybe. And that looks all right. Then I could have that one there like that. On top of that one. So we've got got three, one, two, and then something like that. Hold this down so it all sticks. This one I'm going to give some thin layer of glue on the back. And then this one on top, like that. Okay, where's my deli paper? Um, and maybe Um, maybe I will use, I'm not sure yet, let's have that there, I think, a little white one on top, or maybe there to sort of separate the two blues there. Right, so I'm going to press this all down really firmly with my deli paper to keep everything clean. So now I've got lots of spare feathers another card so this bit here is looking a bit messy but I'm going to cover most of it up with my sentiment so I've got a stitched banner die here it's only fishtailed at one end but I'm going to use that so for my sentiment I've got this little grungy label stamp that says just for you and I'm going to stamp it in peacock feathers so it coordinates Looks fine. Actually, I might just give it one more go. So it's nice and bold. I'm going to give it a blast with my hairdryer to dry it, and then I'm going to cut it out. And with a shape like this, I don't need a die. I can literally just cut, leave a little white border around the outside of the stamp. So that is going to go across there for just a little extra layering piece. And that's going to go on top so a little bit of tape runner on this to get that stuck on there and then i'm going to put a little sliver of foam underneath there just to help that stay level And I want to add some enamel dots, but I don't have any in the correct colour or the colour that I want. So I'm going to make my own, as I did the other day. Just blend some salvage patina on a bit of smooth white cardstock. And then die cut it with this cover plate die. I'm going to do what I did the other day and put some sticky on the back first. Now... I should have some perfectly coloured enamel dots. Well, they're not enamel dots yet, they're just dots. From various sizes to put around the place. Now to turn them into enamel dots, I'm just going to add some glossy accents. When they dry, they will look like enamel dots. I'm thinking of doing 
one of my Swim Less Craft More videos along the theme of things that I wouldn't spend money on again or would rarely spend money on again. If that's something you're interested in, then do let me know in the comments because I've got a little list of things that I no longer buy because I can make my own. Right, I think that's it. I'm really happy with that. I think if I did it again, I wouldn't have this one sticking out quite so far. I might make it a bit more vertical so that the, the bluey feathers are a bit more together. But other than that, I think that's worked out quite well. So that's turquoise slash bluey green greeny blue day done. So tomorrow will definitely be blue day in rainbow week slash fortnight. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a few ideas of the things you can do with stuff that's already in your stash. If you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for Blue Day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.